I believe that we are in the last days and the church does not have much time. And everything that we do, we must do it now. And we must do it believing that this is our day. Amen? And I'm going to uh, <clears throat> read from Psalms 127. I want to pour my heart out to you tonight. As we are gathered here in this Faithful Men's Conference, many lives are going to be built. Tears are going to roll down. Hearts are going to change. We're going to experience the presence of the Lord like, like we have been feeling it here. But I don't want it to stay here. I'm not going to preach you an in-house message. Tonight, I'm going to be speaking to the missionaries, the evangelists, the pastors, the priests, and the witnesses of Jesus Christ. These are the men that are going home to their homes and are going to do what God wants them to do. If you don't see yourself as a missionary, as an evangelist, as a pastor, as a priest, how do you see yourself? I want you to know it's time to take the burden away from your pastor. It's time to take it away. I think it's time that you pick it up. Amen. And this Psalms, Psalms 127, verses 1 through 5. Except the Lord built the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are in the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath this quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for the reading of your word. Lord, just let your anointing flow through every mind, through every heart, and through every spirit. Lord, that our fellow ground may be broken and that our will, dear God, tonight and our purpose, dear Lord, may be to fulfill your vision in our lives. Lord, speak to our hearts. Have your way, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I consider this a very great and honorable privilege of God to stand before holy men, special men, chosen men, and gifted men. It is an honor to be able to deliver the word to those men that God has called. And there is a great importance of being present in this conference. The Psalm speaks of three things. Building a house, watching over the city, 
and raising up a family. Now we want to break this down, building ourselves in the Lord. It's very important how you build. It's very important how you rule your family. And it's very important how you reproduce in your family. It is very important to know that we could be reproducing ungodly children instead of godly children. And we need to understand that it is God's will and purpose for our homes to be blessed. But there is a clause that we must understand. And that is that we cannot build outside of God. And my question to you tonight is how are you building? The Bible says unless or except. God, except the Lord built the house, they labor in vain. That word except or unless is a word of divine warning. It is said that in the midst of a great visitation of God, the outpouring of His Holy Spirit, the anointing of God flowing through every congregation, there is still in the hearts of leaders of homes the attitude of anxiety, the fear of not wanting to take on new responsibilities, the sense of inadequacy, and the spiritual strength that is training them spiritually and physically. A lot of mental and physical exhaustion, discouragement, and spiritual depression. And all of this is because we need to understand that it is not God's will for us to walk around half-hearted, fainting, sick, depressed, rejected. It's time that we stand up. I said it's time that we stand up. But we're not going to stand alone. We must understand what the Word of God says. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But if we are building on Jesus Christ, we could say like the Apostle Paul, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yeah. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus spoke of a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And then he spoke of a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And it stands to reason that we must build knowing that God is in control. That God is blessing. I am more convinced than ever that you cannot try to do things on your own. I don't care how much knowledge you have. I don't care how good you are. And I don't care how powerful you are. Without God, you are nothing. God can turn your language around. I did it. It's mine. It's me. I can do it better than the other man. I'm going to tell you something. God didn't call you to see how good you are or how good you can do it God called us to fulfill his purpose to do his will 
When God is in control, all things are going to work out. When God is not in control, we're going to be a bunch of nervous wrecks. You didn't hear what I said. The Bible says a house divided against itself shall not stand. We either trust the word of God. We either line up with him and do what he wants us to do. He wants you to take care of your house. He wants you to take care of your children. He wants you to bring them up the way he wants it done. And not your way. Not the way you think you know how. You got to bring them up and line them up according to God's word. If you don't do it, you're going to lose them. You can put all kinds of rules. You can put all kinds of laws. But let me tell you something. Are you doing it because you have godly convictions? Are you doing it because it is God leading you that way? Or are you doing it to protect your name? There's a lot of difference. When we want to defend the name of the Lord, which doesn't need to be defended, all we need to do is obey. I said all we need to do is obey and line up with him and he'll take care of the rest. I said he'll take care of the rest. We need to search our hearts. Search ourselves completely. Because there are some consequences that are hidden inside. You see, when we try to challenge God's authority, we're going to pay for it. We're going to pay for it. All of us that are here are familiar with the cry, not only outside, but within. And we have got to stand up and stop the crying within and help those outside. There are many marriages that are failing. Divorce and remarriage is out of control. We have a lot of fatherless children. I said we have a lot of fatherless children. Spiritual homeless children. Notice what I said. Spiritual homeless children that don't know how to feel the presence of God don't know what it is to be filled with the Holy Ghost don't know what it is to have a prayer meet in their home don't know what it is to dance in the presence of the Lord they need a leader if it's good here it's good in the home I said if the jumping is good here it's good in the home if our clapping is good here it's good in the home if our running is good here it's good in the home if we can pray here we can pray at home if we can shout here we can shout at home with our family Amen. Let me tell you, it's time for our families to be set free. It's time for our families to receive the blessing that God has bestowed upon them. Hallelujah. And if we don't, we're going to fall into temptation. The temptation of sexual lust. The temptation of power and control. The temptation of love of money. We're going to chase success. 
And we're going to forget God. That's what's happening in a lot of homes today. They're forgetting who God is. They only have an acquaintance with God when they go into a sanctuary. But that's not enough. I said that's not enough. The Lord has got to be the Lord in our home. Amen. When we have a strong leader, we're going to have a strong home. And we're going to have a strong church. But if we have a weak leader, we're going to have a weak family and we're going to have a weak church. But thank God that we have the ability to overcome. I said we have the ability to overcome. It's not enough just to go around saying greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You either believe it or you don't believe it. It's either good for your wife and your children or it's just there. Huh? If God is with us, who can be against us? Now if you believe it, you'll believe it at home. I said you will believe it at home. All your problems don't start in the sanctuary. All your problems start at home. All your problems come from home. It's not your pastor. It's not your brother. It's not the district. It's nothing else but you. Come on, if you don't worship God at home, how are you going to worship God here? You don't praise God at home, how are you going to praise God here? You don't pray at home, how are you going to pray here? If you don't feel the presence of God at home, how are you, how are you going to feel the presence of God here? You don't come here to train, you come here to give God something. This is not a training base. We come to offer God what we have, what we have received, what he has given us. Hallelujah. You see, the Bible speaks of builders who built without any direction and blessing of God. You know the story of Babylon. I'm not going to get into it. But what was it? let us build let us build and we could be saying the same thing to the Lord let me run my home let me take care of my wife let me take care of it what happens when you fail who are you going to blame you see they had human ambition they had pride of self but there's something I want you to see. God interrupted. And sometimes we blame the devil for everything. The devil is shaking my home. The devil is shaking my marriage. The devil is shaking my children. Sometimes it's God shaking to line you up. I said, it's God. Sometimes we want to do things without, without the blessing of God. Well, I know how to do it. I've done it before. I don't need God. What do I need God for? I've been in this for 20, 30 years. What do I need God for? He'll show you if you need him or not. He'll make himself visible to you. See if you need him or not. Amen. Amen. You see, it was not the devil, it was not man, but God confused their language and scattered the people, and God stopped the work. You know, sometimes we, we think we're just going to hang around, sit around, complain, you know, knock each other down, and try to put the work of God down. And you know, sometimes the Lord is just going to shake us, He's going to send a few that way a few that way a few that way and we're going to say what's happening here the devil's here what do you mean the devil's here how can the devil be in here he's got better brains and senses to be here tonight uh, he's not going to go where the fire's at who told you he's here 
Who told you he's here? The Lord is here. I said the Lord is in this place. Ain't no devil here. Ain't no devil can tell me not to put my hands together. Ain't no devil can tell me I can't put my feet together. Ain't no devil here to tell me I can't shout glory hallelujah. That's up to me. If I know who I'm serving and what I'm serving him for. And what my purpose is for. I don't need to blame the devil. But you see God stopped it. God can stop any of us cold. Say, all right. Except the Lord built. Everything is in vain. You're going to try. You're going to respire. You're not going to be able to sleep. You're going to be all nervous at work. You're going to be run down, burned out. Why? Are you building in vain? What does your wife mean to you? How many of you left your wife home? I didn't. I'd be a liar if I told you I left her at home. I still have her right here. 27 years right here. You know why? We made a covenant till death do us part. Sure, she's not here. She's absent. She's home. That doesn't mean I left her over there and I'm a free man now to do what I want to do. She's just as present. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, you can be building in vain, fruitlessly. I'm tired. Aimlessly. You're trying to do your work. And you're trying to help out in the church then you come home and your home's all falling apart and you're worried and you begin to worry pretty soon you start confessing I give up I quit forget it brother Misael forget it you stay with your program you do it I'm tired Misael why are you tired? You neglected your fellowship, not your relationship, your fellowship with God. Your walk with Him. You left them when they locked up the church on Sunday night. You left them there. And you went home thinking, I don't need them here. Let me tell you something. We need the Lord in our homes. He's welcome there anytime, all day, all night. When He's present, notice that. When He's present, you don't need a lot of watchdogs. Huh? You don't need a bunch of wired fence or whatever they use today to protect themselves why do you need all of that when the angel of the Lord is there to protect you burglar will come to your house angel said don't you think you're in the wrong house what you doing here you better go on before you get caught We got saints that got to sleep with a dog on their side. Huh? He protects me. What did the Lord say? I will not leave you nor forsake you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. But you know what's wrong? We've got the habit of leaving them in the sanctuary on Sunday nights. That's got to stop, fellas. I said, that has got to stop. We have got to take them with us. I said, we've got to take them with us. We've got to take them with us wherever we go. Amen. We've got to see results. Everybody say, it's time to see results. 
It's time to stop working with the wrong attitude. If God is in control, how can I fail? You see, we are blessed. Turn around and tell somebody you're blessed. But don't fall asleep while you're telling them. Let them know you're blessed. Let them know you're blessed. I tell everybody, you know what's wrong with us? We need to confess what we have. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And when I go to a restaurant, I'm blessed. You order your hamburger, I'm going to order something that I like to eat. Because I'm blessed. And sometimes we can't even sit there and eat the way we should. We ought to sit there in the midst of a dark generation that's sinful, has no purpose, no direction, and let them look at you shining. And if you can shine in the public, let me tell you, it's because you're shining at home. When you shine at home, brother, you can shine wherever you go. You can shine at work. You can shine in the public anywhere you go. You know why? Because you're not depressed. Because nobody's putting you down. Because you've got the Spirit of God in you. Because you've got your fellowship with God. Because you've been with God. You've been walking with Him. You've been talking with Him. You've been telling Him, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord make one rich. Turn around and tell your brother, you're rich. You've been talking like you're poor. That old poor language. Rich. He didn't say you'd have a million dollars in the bank. He said he was rich and became poor to make us rich. We're rich in grace. We're rich in love. We're rich in power. We're rich in faith. We're rich in hope. We're rich in salvation. We're rich in the blood. We're rich. We're rich in everything Jesus has given us. your brother you're not sick you're healthy you're healthy turn around and tell him you're not sick you're healthy we could be dying right now in a hospital but we're not dying brother I'm not us. we're healthy amen it doesn't matter if you got diabetes or whatever you got just tell that diabetes you're in remission right now don't worry about it right now Turn around and tell your neighbor, you're not dead. You have eternal life. What's wrong with you? Somebody says, wait till I get to heaven. Wait till I get to heaven. Heaven is here. Heaven is here. Heaven is here. Heaven is in your heart. Heaven is in your heart. Heaven is in your spirit. Heaven is in your mind. Heaven is here. I gotta make this my heaven. Oh yes, he's my peace, he's my joy, he's my love, he's everything. He said he would bless me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessing me endure with power, prosperity, longevity, provision, protection, glory, honor, and favor. Notice that. We're not just anybody. We're not just anybody. We're blessed. Yes, we I said we're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. Some of you go around feeling sorry for yourself. You go around saying, you know, I'm an, I'm an apostolic. 
And then you make people think twice. What, what is that? The way you say it. The way you say it. Soy apostolico. Huh? Stand up straight and tell them what you are. Tell them what you are. Amen. You got to go to work like you're blessed. Drive your car like you're blessed. Go to church like you're blessed. Take your family to church. Do you know what? Everything we have, he made it possible. That car. That house, that food, those clothes, everything. He's blessed us. This is why we go to the house of the Lord. This is why we serve the Lord. He's made it possible. I said, He's made it possible. Hallelujah. This blessing will remain as long as you walk in the fear of the Lord. Remember, it's not how much you make an hour. Well, I make so much. I'm very important. You're not important next to me. I make just as much as you do. If you make $100 an hour, so do I. My God has all the money. Huh? Why should I worry what I got at Wells Fargo? I got nothing. They even charge me for what I don't have in there. But I've got a bank that's untouchable up there. And you know, when I don't have nothing down here, he just opens the bank and says, son, there it goes. There it goes. You know, sometimes we don't want, we don't even realize how we exist. Huh? Notice, the gas keeps going up, but we keep rejoicing. <laughs> huh? And nobody had problems with the gas coming. Uh-uh. Hey. You know? Hallelujah. And we've got to guard this unity with a passion. I love the unity that's in these men. I tell you, you come from all parts. Look at that. Man, this brother, I was telling the brother that came with me, God has bestowed you with grace, brother. Look at these men. Huh? Hallelujah. And don't forget, everything that is devilish is devilish. You know, they try to build, they try, Lord, just so see how good you can build. Huh? But when you built in him, his blessing is bestowed upon you. Amen. And let's seek faithfulness, not flashiness. And, uh, you know, that brother over there don't have a degree like me. I tell you, I admire, I appreciate educated men. We got tremendous men. Tremendous educated men up here. But I got good news for all you educated men. I'm educated too. I'm educated in the knowledge of God to know what He loves for His church. You see, I may not have doctor's language or whatever, that's not that's, that's whatever. Okay. But I understand what he wants for his church. See, I can sit, brother Almaraz, next to a lawyer, as smart as he is, and with all his degrees, he doesn't know nothing about the church. I can tell him. Brother Sam can go and sit next to a doctor and tell him all about the church and everything, all the bones of the church and everything. And say, Sam, where are you coming from? Huh? Turn around and tell somebody, I'm not dumb, I'm smart. Smartest thing you did was come to this faithful men's conference. Hey Amen. Who's been telling you you're dumb? You're not dumb. Get off that kick. I said, get off that kick. You're not dumb. Hey Amen. And let's have the attitude 
of forgiveness. Learn to forgive. Forgive your wife. Forgive your children. Forgive one another at home. And when you learn how to forgive at home, you're going to learn how to forgive me. Huh? You're going to learn how to forgive your brothers in the church. Amen. Won't you just lift up your hands and say, I love my wife. I love my children. I love the Lord Jesus Christ to be the head of my house. That's it. Hallelujah. You got to have true passionate prayer. Get all the wisdom you can from ahead, from above. And learn true spiritual dependence. Learn to trust in the Lord. Huh? Trust in the Lord. You musicians, trust in the Lord. Huh? Well, you know, I know how to play. I don't need to pray. But you better pray. I tell you, I don't know music, but I can sure tell when you're out of tune. I don't know how to play no instrument. I can tell when they're out of tune. I can tell when they're not in the spirit. Hello. And don't forget, fulfill God's purpose. Amen. Amen. You know what God's purpose is? Just like he loved the church and just like he loves you, he wants you to build according to his purpose. And he says, husbands, love your wives. Don't just tell her that when the lights go off. Don't be a coward. After 12 o'clock, I know how to say I love you. Huh? My father was in his late 80s. And he used to kiss and embrace my mother in front of us. We didn't understand it, Brother Maras. We thought it was funny. Huh? But now I understand. That's genuine love. Huh? And some of us can only love after midnight. And then we're in the dark. I love you, baby. I love you, sweetheart. I love you. Are you here? Are you here? Like the blind man. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? Oh, no. Love. See, the more you love the Lord Jesus Christ, the more of his love you have, the more of his love you receive, the more love you take in, the more love you're going to give. I said, the more love you're going to give. You're going to love her. You're going to love your children. When you sit at the table, you're going to see the house you're building. You're going to see the lives you're building. You're going to see what God is doing. He's doing a miracle in your house. Don't take it for granted. Thank God when your table is surrounded. Thank you. Lift up your heart and say, Lord, thank you for this miracle. Thank you for this miracle. Oh, Hariyama Shandara was. We got to go home and encourage others. We got to go home and pick up those men that are falling to the wayside. We got to go home and see our children that are struggling in their marriages restored. We've got to go home and see our children that are struggling to serve God. Don't condemn them, don't mark them. Don't cast them out. Go back home. And ask the Lord to rebuild their lives. Let him rebuild their lives. Let him rebuild their lives.
It's not time to judge. It's not time to condemn. That's not our business. Our business is to help restore those that are fallen, those that are weak, those homes that are coming apart. It's our job to help them. And how are we going to help them? We're going to help them by being an example to them. Not discourage them, but be an example. Let them look up to you. And let them say, if he can do it, then God is with him. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Amen. Everybody stand. Puestos en pie. Vamos a amar. Let's love the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, we love you, God. We love you, Jesus. Amen. 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 What a beautiful message. Beautiful message. God has spoken to our lives. Dios ha hablado en nuestro corazón.